Hi, I'm Jason Hibbets with opensource.com. I'm here with Chris DeBona, uh, Director of Open Source at Google. He oversees license compli compliance and uh, also helps with their internal open source developer community. So um, you basically built the open source um, initiative at Google from the ground up. Starting in about 2004? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. What was that like? It felt, it doesn't sound like it was an easy task to do. No, no, it actually wasn't hard. You know, um, Google already had a number of open source developers internally when I got there. And they what they wanted by hiring me was to formalize it, make it easy, and as they grew, uh, to make it persist, you know, so that Googlers could still feel like they can contribute and, and release open source pro uh, projects. And, and more importantly, that we could also use open source software inside the company. Uh, and they knew that, that that would need a bit of care. Right. Uh, and they were growing enough at that point that they needed somebody who, whose job it was to care about that. So so it was more a matter of coming in, formalizing what was informal processes, okay. and then uh, you know looking after compliance in a scalable way uh, for the then and still now very fast growing company. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, any changes recently or is that music? I imagine it's well, always you know, evolving, Larry, right? Well, uh, re you know, Larry reasserted as CEO, because uh, he was our original CEO right. uh, back in the, the dusty past, and then uh, Eric came in, and then Eric became chairman of the board emeritus, CEO type guy, uh, and Larry became CEO again. Larry changed how the company was organized internally. Um, which changed some aspects of the work, but and not for the worse or better, just different, okay. you know. Yeah. So, but, you know, the thing about, I've been in large companies before and large organizations before and you know it's just a matter of saying okay here's how we're different now uh, if I were starting today what would I do differently and I, so I, I do this thing at work about every two or three years I bring together sort of uh, the major stakeholders and say okay what are we doing right what if we were gonna start it today how would we do it differently and 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 just try to adapt you right. know and and I sort of take that as a measure of how I'm doing, you know. Because if they say to me, Chris, we're really screwing up this, this, and this, I know what to concentrate right. on. This is why we did a, a renewed focus on uh, Git infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, for Chrome and Android, um, which we've deployed externally as our kernel mirrors and the rest. Um, but all the Android folks are now running, for instance, on a, a version of Git that sits on top of our very scalable back end. That's so, a great approach to know, kind of yeah. check, every, check in every year. Yeah, no, well, it's not, not every year that right. David's Every couple much. years. I, I really don't want to waste their time, but um, it's it's interesting. Okay. So, so yeah, um, so a lot of people hear about uh, all the perks at the Google campus. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us a little bit of insight as to the culture at Google? And um, my, kind of, my main question here is, that, you know, is there a default to open mentality there? Well, you know, I, I would love to tell you that that's the truth, but I mean, most people, you know, uh, at a company like Google, uh, there's a default to coding, okay. right? And and some of those projects are open, some of those are closed. But then we also have people who are very passionate about open source. And what we try to do in their case is, is get to know them and say, okay, you're going to be patching, you know, which projects matter to you, and 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 just make sure they're they're putting. Uh, you know, both our best face forward, but also uh, meeting the right people in okay. open source because um, it's very rare. But there are some projects that are very difficult to deal with uh, as a as a larger company and as an employee of a larger company. And so we make sure that they get the right right kind of attention. Similarly, uh, you know, contributor license agreements mm -hmm. have become um, way more popular over the last couple of years. And some are completely signable, uh, and in fact, are often based on the Apache. Contributor license right. agreement, yeah. which is the same one we use at Google, um, and so that's usually very easy. And so we make a make a point of making those very efficient uh, when when a Google goes to sign those. Other CLAs are not as easy to sign because they carry copyright assignment and often patent assignment clauses that are too, you know, uh, grabby. Sure. You know, <laughs> and so uh, in those cases, we usually end up pushing back on the project that wants that kind of thing, and they often change. Uh, because they still want our patches, yeah. you know, um, and and then in some cases we'll release patches wholly separate from our project, okay. uh, you know, and independent of their desire to have grabby clauses in their CLAs. So so <laughs> you know we exist in, in in those conversations to basically protect Google and to protect Googlers and to protect open source people from yeah. Googlers who are not always so savvy, you know. So well, one of the other important parts about. Um, about contributing open sources or just open source general security. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, recently, Google announced uh, a new program to reward uh, large security improvements to open source projects. 
Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about that and, and well, why you I, see that I'd doing? love to take credit for it, but this came out of our security group, and they're, they're just brilliant. Um, and they're like, hey, you know, we want to expand our bounties programs to these uh, very popular libraries. And we had focused funding mm -hmm. on some of these libraries in the past uh, to ensure that they, uh, they persisted. Um, but this was uh, a very smart approach where basically, uh, you know, uh, what, what it is is if you uh, take a commonly used and popular library and you find a, a security bug in it, um, you know, we're happy to uh, basically award you for finding the bug Great. and for fixing the bug. And then we also have a program on the side where we approach those projects and said, you know, if this creates a lot more traffic for you that's hard to deal with uh, in terms of, you know, patch traffic, right. let us know. We're here to help, cool. you know. And uh, because the reality is, if you look at like a, a library like Zlib or, or the, uh, the OpenBSD drive open as cells and, and the rest, they're incredibly important, right? Uh, they're important to Google, they're important to the web at large, and, and we can make a better web, a more secure web, if we just make sure that you know, these patches are found, found quickly and dealt with. Yeah, and that's um, the power of the source model, right? Well, it, it, that's very, very true. Yeah. And so we just want to you know, make it very, very clear how important these projects are to, to, to the internet, frankly. Yeah. You well, know? Thanks to Google for uh, putting together that program. Well, sure. Um, no, I mean, you should be thanking these library yeah. authors. Yeah. You know, they're, they're the ones they're the that ones do, do their the day-to-day work. Day -to -day work. Yeah. Uh, great. So last question here. Uh, and before the conference here at All Things Open, we uh, did a, an interview with you on yeah. opensource.com. Yeah. And um, you talked about open source being brutal. Uh, it got a lot of attention. Um, yeah, I think that was a great pull yeah. quote. People were really <laughs> like, ooh, brutal. That's, yeah. that's a great thing to say. But yeah. so, I mean, it, it sort of is, right? So what's the, you know, it's it's brutal. What, why is it brutal? <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's very much the survival of the fittest applied to software, right? right. Um, and the thing that people forget about evolution and survival of the fittest is that there's a lot of, you know, uh, stall the forks out there. Uh, and, and it represents broken hearts and, and broken dreams, right? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes those people come back to open source and come back to the mainline project, and sometimes they don't, you yeah. know? And, 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 it, and, and that's how it's brutal, you know? Because it's funny, because people are always like, you know, they do, they do blog posts like, you know, you are not your software, you are not your work, you are not this, but the, the reality is if you're gonna spend eight, 10, 14 hours of your day working on software, you, it is personal. Yeah. If you're gonna spend 10 hours of your day at your work, it is personal. I mean, I, I, it's funny, because people have this mentality that like, well, you know, you, a man is not his work, a woman is not her work. They kind of are. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say it. Put your heart into it, it right? You know, if you yeah. put your heart into something that much, it is. And because of that, you know, when your work is rejected, for whatever reason, you know, it's it's heartbreaking and brutal and, yeah. and all these things. and. At the same time, you know, uh, it's also how we get really good software because sometimes you have to say this piece of software is unsuitable to the task. And that can be hard to hear, but it doesn't change the fact that people want software unsuitable to the task or insecure or broken or worthless. Right. You know, uh, there's no, you know, there's no gentle way to do that, you know? Yeah, it's and, reality, and, right? and, and the thing is, there are some people who, overcorrect the other way and make it extremely brutal, you know, and, and, and that's too bad. Uh, and you see the communities that are harsher than others. But, you know, in, in many of them, it's just simply hearing your software, your patch is unsuitable, and it takes us too long to teach you how to make it suitable. Yeah. That's very hard mm. to hear. It's awful, right? It but is. But at the same time, you know, I've seen it over and over and over again, both inside and outside of a corporate context, and it's like, you know, I would love to take your patch. I'd love to tell you what's wrong with your patch, but to do so would take too much time. You know, and so well, that's why we have better yeah. software, right? Well, that's <laughs> how open source that's how it happens, better. Yeah. Because it's funny, because within a corporate context, you actually it's very hard to say that, right? So uh, for a Googler to say that to another Googler is very difficult, right? I don't have time to help another Googler out. I mean, it happens, right. but yeah. uh, and this is sort of goes to the nature of why some software developers are valued more than others, and. It's a very hard conversation to have. But inside a corporation, you have the conversation. It, it, outside in the open source world, people are just like, I'm not even gonna reply to this crap. You know, I'm just gonna you know, black hole this person's email address. Look how much easier my life is. It now, is. You know? uh, so. But uh, great, well, Chris, we'll take you off the hot seat. Thanks so much for your time today. Sure, happy right. to. Happy